Okay, class, today we're in section 7.4, write and graph exponential growth functions. Before, you wrote and graphed linear models. Now, you will write and graph exponential growth models. Key vocabulary, exponential function, exponential growth, and compound interest. An exponential growth function is a function of the form y equals a times b raised to the x power, where a cannot be 0, b is greater than 0, and b cannot be 1. Exponential functions are nonlinear functions. Observe how an exponential function compares with a linear function. Linear function y is equal to 3x plus 2. This is of the form y is equal to mx plus b. Exponential function, y is equal to 2 times 3 raised to the x. Here, 2 is the a value, 3 is the b value, and of course, x is x. The main thing you're supposed to notice here is that the x values are the same in both functions but you're coming out with different y values. And in particular here, the change is a positive three. Here the change is also a positive three, but it's through multiplication. Here the change is through addition. So once again, for linear function, the change is through addition. For exponential function, the change is through multiplication. All right, let's take a look at example one. Write a function rule. Write a rule for the function, and then they give us the x values, and they give us the y values in this table. We have to figure out what the rule is going to be or what the equation is going to be. Solution. Step one. Tell whether the function is exponential. Okay, we do that by looking at our x values. We say they differ by a positive one. We look at our y values and we see they differ by multiplying each of the preceding values by 2. Notice that here the y values are multiplied by 2 for each increase of 1 in x. So the table represents an exponential function of the form y equals a times b to the x where b is 2. Notice That's 2, and that is the value of b. Step 2, find the value of a by finding the value of y when x is equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to a times b to the 0. And we already know that anything to the 0 power is 1. So y is equal to a times 1. What is a times 1? a. The value of y when x is 0 is 8. So a is equal to 8. If you look up in the table, when x is 0, the value of y is 8. Step 3. Write the function rule. A rule for the function is y is equal to 8 times 2 to the x. Once again, the 2, that was a common difference. And the 8 occurs when x is equal to 0. All right, now let's get guided practice. Uh, for example one, let's get that in our notes. Everyone complete guided practice number one. Example two, graph an exponential function. Graph the function y is equal to 2 raised to the x power. Identify its domain and its range. Solution. Step 1. Make a table by choosing a few values for x and finding the uh, values of y. The domain is all real numbers. So the values we're picking for x, we got 0 in the middle. We pick two positive numbers and then we pick two negative numbers. This would uh, tend to give us a complete picture of the graph. We go through and we evaluate. When we put in x is equal to a negative 2, we come up with 1 over 4, negative 1, 1 half, 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 4. 
and we graph and we're gonna plot these points. When we plot the points, we draw a smooth curve through the points from either the table or the graph. You can see that the range is all positive real numbers. So from the table, you see that all your y values are positive. And from the graph, you notice that all your y values are positive. In quadrant two, y is positive. And in quadrant one, y is positive. Okay, now for those of us who may be a little bit confused as to how they came out with one fourth when x was equal to a negative two. Now don't forget, this is our exponential function, y is equal to two to the x. I rewrote that over here, y is equal to two to the x. All right, so I'm gonna put down equal, that's my two right there. The x value was a negative two, so I put that in. I know that I can rewrite two to the negative two as one over two squared, and two squared is four. So therefore, one over two squared is equal to one fourth. And you would do the same thing here, 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 and here. Example three, compare graphs of exponential functions. Graph the functions y equals three times two to the x and y equals a negative three times two to the x. Compare each graph with the graph of y equals two to the x. Solution. To graph each function, make a table of values, plot the points, and draw a smooth curve through the points. Okay, now let's analyze the table. Once again, we have zero in the middle. We have negative numbers, negative one, negative two, and we have positive numbers, one and two. We evaluate each exponential function using these values. So when we do y is equal to two x, this is what we come out with. When we do y is equal to three times two to the x, this is what we come out with. And when we do y is equal to a negative three times two to the x, this is what we come out with. Okay, now notice, because the y values for y equals three times two to the x are three times the corresponding y values for y equals two to the x, the graph of y equals three times two to the x is a vertical stretch of the graph of y equals two to the x. So in other words, what you're supposed to notice is that 12 is three times greater than four, six, three times greater than two, three, three times greater than one, three over two, three times greater than one over two, and three over four, three times greater than one over four. And this causes the graph, see this is the y is equal to two to the x graph, to be stretched up in a vertical direction, away from the blue line. Okay, now for the green line, because the y values for y is equal to a negative three times two to the x are a negative three times the corresponding y values for y is equal to two to the x, the graph of y is equal to a negative three times two to the x is a vertical stretch with a reflection in the x-axis of the graph of y is equal to uh, y is equal to two to the x. Okay, all they're saying here is if you notice the y is equal to three times two to the x in red here, right? Look at those values and look at these values. You will see that they're opposite. Positive, this is negative. So therefore, when you look at this blue line here and you graph the green, you will notice that the graph goes down in a negative direction. It's going in a negative direction with the same vertical stretch. However, because it is going negative and it's going over the x-axis, this causes it to act as if it were a reflection. That is a reflection of the red line. Okay, let's complete gutter practice two, three, and four. Let's complete gutter practice two, three, and four. Exponential growth. When a is greater than zero, and b is greater than one, the function y equals a times b to the x represents exponential growth. When a quantity grows exponentially, it increases by the same percent over equal time periods. To find the amount to which the quantity grows after t time periods, use the following model. 
Okay, key concept. The equation y equals a times 1 plus r raised to the t, where a is the initial value, r is the growth weight, t is the time period, and 1 plus r is the growth factor. Notice the relationship between the growth rate r and the growth rate factor, 1 plus r. If the initial amount of a quantity is a, and the quantity is growing at a rate of r, then after one time period, the new amount is the initial amount plus the amount of increase. Now that's equal to a plus r times a, and then that's equal to a times 1 plus r. All they did there was to factor out the a. What do they have in common? So you got a plus r times a. What do they have in common? An a. So if you take the a out, a goes into a once. And when you divide here by a, the a's will, cross, will cancel out and you're left with just r. All right, now once again, for those who need to see it, what do these two terms have in common? A. So I'm going to factor an A out by dividing both parts by A. A goes into A once. That's that. Um, R times A divided by A. Once again, A goes into A once. So I'm left with R. And since I factored out an A, the A is on the outside. Now notice if I multiply it, I get the same thing back. What's a times 1? a. What's a times r? Either a r or r a. It means the same thing. Example 4. Solve a multi-step problem. Collect a car. The owner of a 1953 Hudson Hornet convertible sold the car at auction. The owner brought it in 1984 when its value was $11,000. The value of the car increased at a rate of 6.9%, excuse me, 6.9% per year. A, write a function that models the value of the car over time. B, the auction took place in 2004. What was the approximate value of the car at the time of the auction? Round your answer to the nearest dollar. Solution A. Let C be the value of the car in dollars and let T be the time in years since 1984. The initial value A is 11,000 and the growth rate R is 0 0.069. That's where we converted the, uh, converted uh, the percent to a decimal. So we get C is equal to A times 1 plus r raised to the t. a is 11,000, the one we bring down. The rate is 0.069%, and that's raised to the t. So now we're going to simplify. So we end up with 11,000 times 1.069. That's 1 plus 0.069. Now, that gives us our equation or our rule. B, to find the value of the car in 2004, 20 years after 1984, substitute 20 for T. So now we have C is equal to 11,000 times 1.069 raised to the 20th power. Using the calculator, we end up with 41,000. 778. In 2004, the value of the car was about $41,778. Okay, due to count, due to time constraints, read this on your own and read example five on your own. Okay, in this equation, A, 250 is the initial value, 0.04 is the growth rate, and 5 is the amount of time in years. Okay, let's complete guided practice five and six, five and six.